China and Silver Appraisals, with The Fine China Man. Fine China Man here, and today I want to talk about appraisals and my uh, thoughts about them. Now before I begin, I will say I am not an appraiser, I've never been an appraiser, and I hope never to be a, an appraiser. Um, you may have a situation, and I've had um, at least one of my viewers have this problem, where you go in and you get something appraised, and then all of a sudden the value drops after the appraisal is done when you want to sell it. First of all, let's talk about why that happens. Um, anytime you're dealing with a dealer of any kind or someone who owns a shop, they'll appraise your value, your valuable, but then what they're going to do is they're going to offer you much less for it because they want to sell it at that appraised price. They want to profit from it. They're in business, so they're not going to give you the value. If they do tell you, this is the appraised value and I will pay this for you, then they're lying about their appraised value most likely because there's no point of them to buy it if um, they can't sell it for more than what it's worth. You get into a whole problem then about people being dishonest because a lot of um, shops will actually give you a low appraisal hoping you're wanting to sell it so they can buy it even lower than what they say and sell it for much more. That's a big problem. This is why I'm not a big believer in appraisals unless you happen to own something that's very valuable and you want it insured for, I mean, you want it uh, appraised for insurance purposes. But again, that's not most of us. So, what would I do? Well, let me give you an example. So, I have here a dinner plate. This is by Royal Wessex. It's made in England. This is an, I consider this an everyday dinner set. This particular plate is in excellent condition. It, it has been used, but it appears unused. There's no utensil scratches. It's still got a very shiny finish to it, etc. So, I thought, well, how would I determine this plate's value? So, the first thing I would do, and I recommend anybody doing, whether they're looking at uh, china, glassware, or um, silver, is to go to replacements.com and type in the pattern name, or if there's a number on the bottom, that'll quite often work. You type it in, and what ends up happening is you will see the pattern listing. If they have the piece in the pattern that you have, most likely the piece is not ultra rare. If they are out of stock on the piece, either they just haven't bought any recently or it's rare. This particular piece, they show 24 in stock. I just looked it up. 24 in stock. What does that mean? That's the most replacements will ever put down. So they have a minimum of 24 in stock. They might have 100 of these plates. I don't know, but they're not going to tell you they have more than 24. For serving pieces, I believe it's four is the most they'll go up to say they have, even if they have more. So just be aware of that. So they list this plate at $23.99. And when I saw that, I thought, wow, because I bought this plate new at the store for, I think it was $7, 7 or $8. So I thought, wow, this plate's gone up in value. Well, they're not made in England anymore, so I figured, well, maybe it's up a little bit. But here's the thing about replacements. Whatever they say is the highest you can expect to get for it. Unless there's a fluke. I mean, but normally replacements um, has the highest prices. And the reason they can charge those highest prices and they sell is because they're guaranteed. They have a very good return policy. I've bought from replacements for years. They're a very good company, and people are willing to pay a couple bucks more a piece if they have that guarantee. So the next step is you now know the high price. Now to find out the low price, go to eBay and start looking there and see if you can find the same item. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you can. Again, if you can't, it's pointing to the item being more on the rare side. Even if Replacements has it, maybe there aren't a lot of them out there, and Replacements happens to have some right now in which case you can get very close to the replacement value for it by listing it on eBay. And eBay only takes a small percent, so um, you're way better off going through working with eBay than you are through some type of um, shop that has an appraisal. Right. So I looked at the ones that are sold. There's a little checkbox on the side on eBay that you can click on to look at sold listings. 
Those are not the ones that just expired. Those are the ones that someone actually bought. And I found quite a range of prices, as low as I believe it was $5 all the way up to $16. Now, condition matters on these things. So with this plate having um, basically no signs of use, I could expect to get 16 or close to that $16 value. Um, the particular one that had 16 had four of them, and all four had been sold. Um, I believe one sold on sale for 15. So, um, 15 or 16 dollars is very possible for this plate. So again, it's not going to be that exact value of replacements. But why take something to a shop and let them profit on it when you can do it yourself via eBay? Some major things to think about, though. Very important things is. Just, again, describe it accurately. Say you're selling a silver goblet. If it has a little dent in it, mention it. If it has a monogram on it, mention it. All those things matter. Now, as if you have silver pieces and you're selling those, just be aware if they're monogrammed, the price goes down. The value is down. Even if you have something ultra rare in silver, and you say, wow, I could still get this price for it, well, the key word is you could still get that price for it. If it was unmonogrammed and rare, it would even be higher. So anyway, I hope this helps. Make sure that you um, do your research on your items. And sometimes um, items can be rare and you don't realize it, and other times they're not rare and you think they are. I'll give you one last example of that, and it's actually back to that, I'll pick back up the plate, it's back to this same plate again. So when I bought this set, um, I was about 16 years old, I just learned to drive, and I would stop by a particular store that had this in open stock, and I'd buy a piece or two every week. They did not have bread and butter plates. They had dinner plates, salad plates, cups, saucers, bowls, and some serving pieces but no bread and butter plates. And I asked them, can you get bread and butter plates? And no, they couldn't get bread and butter plates. So um, I was on a trip and I saw a couple that were being used as display pieces. They weren't for sale. And I thought, oh, they exist. They must be so rare. Well, then eBay came along and also at the same time, the, the sets got a couple years old and people started to sell them again. So they started showing up in the market used. And so I grabbed a bunch of the, of the bread and butter plates. Well, I've come to realize now the bread and butter plates aren't rare at all. It's the salad plates that are rare, that happen to be in um, the open stock that I was choosing from. It turns out that across the country, most people were buying packaged place settings that did not include a salad plate but included bread and butter. So I find out years later that really the salad plate was the one that was rare. So for that reason now, the salad plate, I didn't check its price today, but the salad plate would be worth more than the dinner plate, just because of its rarity. I hope this helps in determining some of the values of your items. The main thing is just do your homework and sell it yourself. If you like this video, please click the like button below and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.